So another useful tool we use in the clinic is a ultrasound biofeedback. What it does, it basically helps us um, as clinicians see what the patient's actually doing in, on their abdominal muscles and their lower back muscles in activating for core stability. Um, it's a buzz term that's been around for quite a while now and this, this tool's quite useful in allowing us to teach the patients how to pre-activate their core stabilizers before they actually create force. One of the biggest misconceptions that patients have when they turn on their core is to squeeze their muscles as hard as they can and that is um, actually wrong. Um, you do need to recruit your power muscles but there's a particular sequence how your body likes to turn on your muscles when you have to create force like when you have to lift or lean forward and uh, the rule of thumb in the body really is that uh, the closer the muscle is to a joint the more of a role of stabilization it has and then the further away the muscle is from the joint the more of a role of power and what we like to see is those stabilizing muscles so the muscles closer to the joint actually turn on just prior to these power muscles coming on and we're talking milliseconds here. Okay so what we do we place some ultrasound gel on the the head of the uh, ultrasound machine and this allows the the sound waves to be conducted through the gel and onto the uh, corresponding tissue. What I'm just going to do is place it onto the abdominal wall here and what you will see is you can see some layers of muscle and fascia. When you look at this line here and the line above it, it's quite small in between. That's, that's actually your core muscle. That's your transverse abdominus muscle. You can see that with the pointer. Between that fascia layer here and the one above it, that's your internal oblique. And what we want to do is we want to see how the relationship of these two muscles work when I ask you to turn on your core muscles. So what I'll get you to do is to turn on your core muscle as you perceive you should be doing. Okay, so what we see straight away, we can see there's such a big, big gap between that internal oblique muscle between the fascia. Just relax for me. Um, there is a bit of movement in the, the transverse abdominus muscle. Ideally, what I want you to do is, is not turn it on as fast, just turn it on a little bit slower and let's try and get a little bit more thickness and movement through the transverse abdominus versus, that's excellent, versus the internal oblique. Good. Just relax again and just do that again for me. And as you can see, you can see that transverse abdominus works quite well. It's coming on before the internal oblique. Now, if you squeeze a little bit harder again, you can see then internal oblique comes on afterwards. So that's a really good sequence of activation. So just to summarize, um, quite typically what we saw at the beginning, the over recruitment of the, uh, the oblique muscles versus the transverse abdominus muscle is quite common in um, people who have um, poor activation of their core or who have had lower back pain. And uh, when you try and retrain this, uh, the, it's really sluggish in, in turning on these particular muscles in sequence. And it's quite common that it does take a few sessions to get that transverse abdominus actually recruited and turning on in isolation. And then we try and teach you to turn it on and integrate it into functional movement. So we're on a stable platform here. It makes it a lot easier for the patient to learn, especially with lower back pain, to learn how to turn it on. And then when quite typically we get a really good result on the table, we start to get you up and then start to do a functional movements. And, and having function back into your rehab is the most important thing because that's what will get you over the line eventually and minimize your risk of lower back pain again.